We have to become a praying church for the lost. We have to become a praying church that this church will grow and win souls for the Lord. Look at First Timothy, the second chapter. <clears throat> this is Paul's instructions to the church. I think it's God's instructions for us. You'll remember, I hope, that last Sunday I preached the message. I said, the lost cannot be saved and will not be saved unless someone's praying for them. After I left, I got to thinking, well, you know, maybe God can save whoever he wants to. So maybe my remark that they will not be saved doesn't hold any water. And I don't know whether you agreed with that statement or not, but I took it out of a book that says, we need to pray for the lost. A book by, that was written by Lee Thomas. <clears throat> and that was the headlines to start off that book. The lost will not be saved and cannot be saved unless we pray for them. Do you know of any lost? Do we pray for the lost by name? Or do we simply say, I'm praying for the lost? Look at 1 Timothy, the second chapter, the first verse. Paul says, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. These are the words of the Lord through Paul to us. I urge you, we can't sit back. We have, it's an urgent request. I urge you, first of all, before you do anything else, pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. <clears throat> so do we need their names? Do you know of anyone that's lost that we need to be praying about? You need to think about the lost. And we need to get our minds in tune that God can say, these are the ones I want to save. You pray for them. He says, pray this way for kings and all who are in authority. Boy, if there was ever a time for us to pray for the presidents, those that are run, it's now. I don't know how many are Christian and how many isn't. But I've been listening to a few of the debates, and I've been listening on the internet. <clears throat> some of them that are making comments are some of our relation. And I shudder to think what to look forward to. It's only in God's hands. But we need to pray. <clears throat> So that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God our Savior. What? In fact, the fourth verse says, who? I don't know whether your Bible says that or not. But mine says, who wants everyone to be saved? Who? Everyone. and to understand the truth. You know, it's our prayers for the lost <clears throat> that's going to change the world that we're living in. That's how powerful our prayers are. It's our prayers for every situation that's in this box. Lost, going through surgery, whatever it might be, that's going to answer those prayers and save those people. And it's not too late for us to put more names in there. 
it's not too late for us to pray more than what we've been praying. <clears throat> now in closing, James, the fifth chapter, Sixteenth verse. Starts out by saying, confess your sins to each other. We need to witness to one another about how God is working in our life and how sure we are that we're saved. And God's the only one that can do it. He has done it and he'll do it for others. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for me. What he's done for me, he'll do for others. Why? Because that's his plan and that's his purpose. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. There again, pray for each other. Pray for the lost so that you may be healed the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. I want to read the footnote in my Bible for that because I think it's very important. Listen to what it says. The Christian's most powerful resource is communion with God through prayer. If we do not talk to God, how does God know what we like, or what we need. God knows our needs even before we ask, but God wants to hear it from our own lips. God wants to know that what's in our heart is what he's ready to give us for the best. The results are often greater than we thought were possible. Some people see prayer as a last resort to be tried when all else fails. Well, I've tried this and I've tried that and it's all doesn't seem to work. So I guess I'll go to the Lord in prayer. And a lot of times I think we go to God saying that we're going to leave it with him. And then we go about thinking, well, maybe he'll answer it and maybe he won't. And we wait and we wait and we wait and we say, well, what's the use even to pray? God doesn't answer our prayers. It's like the doctors, you know. We think the doctors can't seem to do anything. And so we go from one doctor to another doctor. We try one medicine after another and it doesn't seem to work. So then maybe we'll go to the Lord. He is the great physician, you know. This approach is backward. Prayer should come first because God's power is infinitely greater than ours. It only makes sense, listen to this, it only makes sense to rely on it. Made me think about the frogs. You see, we didn't just come up with the frogs out of nowhere. It's right here in the Bible. Rely on it. Fully rely on God especially because God encourages us to do so. That's what God wants. Who? God wants. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we come again with heavy hearts for all that we see that lies before us. The things that we would like to do the things that we would like to accomplish, we cannot seem to find the answer. Lord, so we pray right now, asking you to continue to guide us and to show us the way that we might accomplish your will. Lord, if there are any of those here today that have not committed their life to you, that have not asked Jesus into their life, we pray, Lord, 
and you'll speak to them. Call them forth. Lord, we pray for the lost. We want to pray for the lost by number. The Bible tells us that we shall know them by the fruits they bear. And so, Lord, we ask that you help us not to judge, but to pray for those we feel you want to save. Help us to form a list of names and offer those names before your throne of grace. That you might call them forth and they might be saved. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning. Sorry, I got long-winded again. Let's stand together. I'm going to close this a little bit different this morning. I want to give you an opportunity if the Lord...